day 14. Tone dipper slash wave meter slash receiver slash signal generator. This is a multi-purpose RF tool based uh, on my tone my tone dipper, which you may have seen on my website. Uh, it's a quite a useful little tool, but it, it's fairly limited. As you can see, it, uh, it only tunes from uh, 5 megs to 17 megs and then 30 megs to uh, 107 megs because I never really made extra coils for it. Also, it, uh, it can only act as a dipper and a wave meter. It can't, like this tool, act as an oscillator and a receiver. The the change to make it do such is actually quite simple. There's a switch in the emitter circuit. Um, this circuit diagram looks a bit weird because I've drawn it upside down. The uh, BF199 is an MPN transistor, but uh, I've drawn everything because I, I made the circuit with a common positive rather than a common negative. The reason why I did this slightly unusual layout is um, because I wanted to be able to ground the the connector and the uh, for the coils and the polyvericons rotor um, to the to the ground plane so that everything's you know min to minimise touch capacitance effects on the on the circuit. It uh, if you happen to have PNP um, RF transistors, you could use them as well and uh, and flip everything around. Uh, basically just flip the supply around, but or, or if you wanted to build it the other way around you could. Um, th there's no reason why you couldn't have the polyvericon to ground instead of to uh, well, <laughs> to the, the positive supply as opposed to the negative supply. Um, and the coil, you know, it can, it's not such a big deal if it goes to the something that's sort of floating. You'd, there's a hundred nano capacitor across the rails anyway, so most RF current would be returned via that. Anyway, um, the switch in the, the emitter circuit enables you to switch between um, dip slash wave meter mode where the super generative circuits um, quench frequency is brought down into the audio range so that generates a tone. The tone um, varies with the properties of, of the actual oscillator itself so if you're coupling extra loss or, or extra load into this inductor from an external circuit um, or extra signal into it as well the, the uh, self-quenched oscillators um, quenching frequency will change and that's amplified by this simple amplifier and goes to a piezo. Um, to, normally when you build a super regenerative receiver the quench frequency is supersonic above the range of human hearing and you know is normally filtered out or essentially ignored by the the rest of the circuit so what I've done is I've got a center off um, single pole double throw switch. In the center it, uh, it leaves a much smaller capacitance and a much larger resistance in, um, in the emitter circuit and this causes the quench frequency to be quite, uh, quite high, about 150 kilohertz or so, maybe up to 300 kilohertz depending on exactly what coil you've got in here. This part of the circuit is very tricky to get working and I haven't actually got it working properly yet. I'll show you it squigging all over the place in a minute. Um, in particular because of the properties of the coils, you know, every coil is slightly different and they've all got different Q and different losses and uh, it's quite difficult to come up with a general solution. So what might actually be the simplest if you were going to build this for yourself is to use a 200k pot for this resistor and you can adjust it appropriately. That might also um, might not also get rid of the next setting which is the, um, the oscillate mode where it's acting as a signal generator. In this mode, a much smaller resistance, a um, couple of hundred ohms, is switched in and sort of overrides this disc, which is always connected. And the thing acts just as an RF oscillator and produces, you know, a, a similar kind of performance to this circuit from uh, previous days, where you've just got an oscillator. This one's obviously using FETs. This one's using BJTs, but conceptually, it's the same, same kind of deal. You can couple some energy out of it. I don't. There's no buffer though for um, taking the RF out. You could, if you wished, couple a little bit of RF off here or off here with a JFET, um, or with a, maybe with a BJT too, depending on how you set it up, and have a, a counter output. So there's a lot of a lot of things you can do, and it, it becomes a fairly generic tool. I mean, it can generate and detect RF from, you know, probably high HF. It will actually operate down to about one megahertz, but the selectivity of a super generative receiver is pretty terrible and uh, it's not terribly useful down there. From about 10 megahertz up it becomes quite useful. As a matter of fact I was listening to shortwave broadcast stations with it and uh, the day 2 audio amplifier. So I, I had an earpiece output. Um, you can use a crystal earpiece and you get 
reasonable volume, not, not particularly good volume. If you're using a signal generator on the desk, that's not a big deal. If you want to hear off-air signals, uh, coupled into this, say, with a, you know, a, just the antenna wire near it, or the antenna wire actually clipped to ground works fairly well too, because of the, you know, probably strays coupling it into the, the tank. Um, or an, an external tuner, you can do that as well. And it, it acts as a you know, pretty reasonable receiver. It, again, selectivity is terrible, but uh, for the stronger short broadcast stations, you can hear them fine. And with very small inductors, uh, a couple hundred nanohenries, the thing tunes the FM broadcast band and the um, up to about 150 megahertz. But uh, obviously, stability in uh, and selectivity is a bit of a, a bit of a limitation. Wideband FM is reasonable. AM on the airband, you can you can just hear the approach controller here. Um, with no antenna at all, but it's just picking it up from the little loop of wire I'm using. Let's see. This is a coil, so it hasn't got a whole lot of capture area. Oh, shush. That's just it misbehaving itself. Uh, Alright, well, let's have a look at the physical circuit. Oh, this inductor is a, is a choke. I haven't actually measured it yet. It's about uh, 15 turns on a very small uh, FT23-43. Or 25 43. It's one of the smallest um, little ferrite rings you can get. Uh, it works pretty well for the VHF end of things. For the lower frequencies, it starts to become problematic and its impedance is probably not high enough. So you might put two chokes in series or maybe a ferrite bead and a, you know, like you would uh, when you're building a bias to have a couple of different chokes so that it covers a wider frequency range. Again, if you only care about high HF and VHF, not a big issue. Um, you know, obviously with the other test equipment that we've built with the RF sniffer and the, um, the oscillator, the only thing that, that this, that they can't do, you know, is receive and actually, uh, generate an audio signal, but you're probably better off building an actual receiver for those low bands anyway, because it's not particularly difficult, stability is normally not an issue. Alrighty. So, here's the circuit, yet another 9 volt battery topper. Still in the prototyping phase, because I'm having problems with the, um, the receive mode, the uh, the dip and wave meter works quite well. So I've got my signal generator here, hopefully generating some RF. And this is a coil. That how am I going to do this one-handed? <laughs> Alright, let me put the inductor there. So that's its dip functionality. Um, normally mid the mid of you know mid position on the switch would be receive. You can hear that it's super regenerating now but not doing it very well. Uh, what I can do is I can couple that out into the audio amplifier and you can hear the hiss. But it drops out of super regeneration at various places, which is kind of annoying. There might be some resonances in that choke that I have to play around with. And uh, the last setting which currently doesn't have a resistor there, but I had a resistor solder across it and it does work fine. Would switch the small resistor in series and make it uh, into a, an oscillator generating a signal. Now if I... Uh, how can I do this? Oh, it's hard to show you, but if I switch it into, um, into, tra into that mode, into CW mode or into, um, into regenerate mode, dip mode, it will uh, actually produce enough signal for the sniffer to pick it up so even though it's uh, even when it's super regenerating the actual pulses of RF that it generates are significant enough to be picked up by the dipper by the the uh, RF sniffer alrighty um, had some problems with this project getting it to work I actually managed to blow up the uh, the transistors accidentally with a slip of the multimeter which cost me some time which is why I haven't got it all finished in the, the few hours that I have allocated. Uh, let's see, that's about it for this one. Uh, I'll finish it off in the next few days probably.
tomorrow? Hmm, don't know. I, I'm actually running out of simple projects to do. Most of the projects that I want to do are going to take more than the few hours that I can spend at night on them. Uh, I've still got plenty of ideas, but uh, simple ideas have, have become exhausted for a while and uh, only the more complicated ones remain. We'll see if we can come up with some quick and easy projects uh, for the remainder of the week and then um, we'll do something more substantial on the weekend. Alrighty, this has been uh, you know, ten and a half minutes. That's uh, a fairly long one. So I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, till the next one. Bye.